So as far as shiny sh** goes, let's face it, there's been subtle interesting news this week, which is slightly problematic when you're trying to chuck together a weekly tech news show. I mean, seriously, the most exciting and thrilling tech headline I could find this week was Realme may not supply power adapters with future budget smartphones. I mean, holy shit, quick now, strap me down and give me that sedative before I chew through my own goddamn tongue. I did actually have a plan B for just such occasions, which I wrote on this bit of paper and sealed away in this here envelope many moons ago when I was completely off my face on two-for-one rhubarb daiquiris. But unfortunately, when I opened it up, all it said was just wing it, dildo breath. So, wing it, I will. After all, that's what us Brits do best anyway. So what I thought we'd do is, instead of the usual half-assed recap of the week's tech news, I would smash through some of the best smartphones we're expecting to launch here in the UK in the next sort of two, three, four months. So come hither, whatever that bloody means. Pour yourself a pint of whiskey and settle in for a not at all rushed and rough as f roundup of the best smartphones that you might want to start saving up for now because a lot of them are pretty bloody expensive. Techspert Weekly. So yeah, even though it kind of feels like we've already had about five dozen new smartphones launch in 2022, there's still tons more lingering on the horizon. Yippee hooray. And of course, about half of them will be bloody Motorola's. Last week, we already covered the Google Pixel 6, which should be officially unveiled on May 11th at Google's whopping great willy Waven event, Google I.O. However, the Pixel should face stiff competition from the Poco F4, which is set to launch around the same sort of time in spring. And like its predecessor, the Poco F3, this should serve up some serious grunt for not much scratch. Rumours say that Qualcomm's Snapdragon 870 will once again power the F4, just as it did the F3, thus ensuring that every frame of you being sniped in the face by some clever off school kid in Call of Duty is delivered in a smooth and satisfying manner. However, as quite a lot of recent Poco smartphones have essentially just been rebranded, spit and polished versions of Xiaomi's Chinese smartphones, there's a pretty bloody good chance that the Poco F4 might actually just be a rejiggered Redmi K40s. This comes packing up to 12 gigs of RAM, a near 6.7 inch AMOLED display with 120Hz refresh and HDR10 Plus support, a 4500mAh battery with 67W fast charging and a 48MB IMX582 camera. So on the surface, the Poco F4 seems like it might sport more basic camera tech compared with the more recent Redmi Note 11 handsets, but if it's sheer power you want, well this thing will kick 10 bells out of a jacked up kangaroo. Uh, no, I don't really know what that means. Does it make sense? Probably not. It just kind of tumbled out of my mouth hole. Don't know about you guys at home, but I reckon I've got a really good feeling about this episode. Best one yet. In fact, I might just stop doing it after this one, because how could I possibly top this mighty summit? Hey, look, what's this, kiddies? That's right, it's the Xperia 1 Mark IV flagship phone from Sony, set to launch in the next month or so, or basically whenever they finally get their shit together. And yeah, you're right, it does look an awful lot like the Mark III, but hey, Sony has apparently overhauled the camera tech, so now you've got a triple 48 meg setup with wide, ultra-wide, and telephoto options, plus a bonus periscope lens on top of all of that. So two zoom lenses for the price of one more fuzz. So kind of similar to the S22 Ultra. The only problem is that this fresh leak does contradict previous leaks and renders shown just three camera lenses rather than four. So which leak is the most trustworthy or alternatively, is it all just a whole pile of bollocks? Personally, I'm gonna go with option three because always bet on bollocks, especially where the internet's concerned. Camera shenanigans aside, we can also expect the usual Sony bonuses like an actual headphone jack plus a gorgeous OLED screen unhindered by selfie cam orifices. I'm also expecting a strong focus on gaming after Sony's commitment to Call of Duty Mobile and that impressive expansion of the Xperia's dedicated gamer features. And no doubt Sony will decide to launch it at half term when all of the bloody school kids will be available to snipe me from 300 yards over and over and over again. Another flagship handset that we yet to see is that super leaky Motorola Edge 30 Ultra. And the big whoop here is an almighty 200 megapixel primary camera using Samsung's Isocell HP1 sensor to capture incredibly lifelike photos day or night, as long as Motorola hasn't somehow f***ed it all up of course. And the rest of the specs are mostly pretty premium stuff too. You've got the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 as found in all the Billy Big Bollocks Androids of 2022. You've got up to 12 gigs of RAM, a 4,500 mAh battery with 125 watt fast charge. That's considerably better than most other motors out there. And a 6.67 inch POLED display, although it is only Full HD+. 
So yeah, to be fair, as long as those rumours don't turn out to be a massive barrel full of crusty monkey dung, then Motorola could well serve up one of the best flagships of 2022, and that bad boy is expected to drop around sort of June-July time. Yippee hooray! Now the Honor Magic 4 Pro has already launched over in China, but should hopefully be getting a proper UK needs up soon as well. Everything about this beast sounds proper lush, from the 6.81 inch Quad HD Plus OLED screen with HDR10 Plus support, to the 100 watt wired and wireless charging support, plus that mental Eye of Muse camera setup which tops off at 100 times zoom just like the S22 Ultra. You've also got a dual selfie cam setup, you've got a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, and as a kicker it looks proper bloody nice too. And likewise, here's hoping that the Realme GT Neo 3 heads west pretty soon too, with its trouser rousing 150 watt fast charge support. This handset packs some proper Johnny Longshong specs like the Realme GT2 Pro, except it's powered by MediaTek's Dimensity 8100 chipset. And there's actually two variants of this thing as well, one with the 150 watt charging, and another that makes do with 100 watts, pfft, but also packs a bigger battery. Anywho, there's a roundup of some of the best new blows that should be hitting the UK around sort of spring, early summer time, the next sort of three, four months. But of course, you can expect a shag load of a fresh new handsets to also be launching at the tail end of 2022, including the likes of the Google Pixel 7, the iPhone 14 series. But all that shiz is definitely going to be the subject of a whole other video, partly because splitting it into two like this means I get more ad revenue, win, and also partly because, frankly, right now, all I want to do is go lie down in an empty bathtub, fully clothed, with a bottle of scotch clenched between my teeth and the best of Bewitched album playing on the stereo. And I don't know why, it's just the only way I can fully relax these days. So charging on, it's now time for the part of the show that in a past life was probably Attila the Hun or some other almighty twat. It's viewer comments. Viewer comments. <laughs> So first up this week is George, hey George, says This show keeps on surprising me by how great and professional it is week in, week out. Now if you guys could just help me out in the future just by putting in brackets after your comments whether it's sarcastic or not, that would be a massive help. I have like a very poor sarcasm filter. I guess then the only problem is then will the bit in brackets also be sarcastic. But for the sake of my own mental health, I'm going to say that wasn't sarcasm, that George has been 100% honest and uh, and truthful there. So thanks, George. Much appreciated. Uh, next up, uh, pum pum, uh, pum pum, pun pom pum, what the f*** is wrong with my eyes and brain today? Just, just the same shit, I guess. I'm drunk and also getting old. Um, fun times. Pun pom per says, I am so tempted to buy the Pixel 4a as it's still available online in my region. Very nice. Uh, it has a simple design, small form factor and headphone jack. But from what I've heard about the time it takes to process a photo, I'd rather go for the Pixel 6a now that it also has the Tensor chip. Yeah, I mean, the Pixel 4a is still a great handset, definitely. And I, I personally wasn't troubled at all by the processing time. Uh, I thought it was absolutely fair. Even when you're shooting, you know, kids, cats, whatever, uh, it, you know, it wasn't the slowest around, that's for damn sure. Um, of course, Pixel 6a, it's still a case of will it have the Tensor chipset in it? We'll only find out potentially at Google. IO, and also how much will it actually bloody cost as well. It'll probably be uh, a bit of an upgrade in price over the Pixel 4a. Eh? And next up, Falcon says, a cheeky question about Xiaomi haptics. I've only used the Mi 11 Lite and loved it, but the haptics are horrific coming from years of Pixel use. Do the high-end Xiaomi blowers have better haptics? Um, yeah, I mean, as you'd expect, really, the Xiaomi 12, the Xiaomi 12 Pro had pretty decent haptics as well. Not quite as quiet as uh, the likes of the OnePlus 10 Pro, unfortunately. It did still kind of sound like you've got a flatulent bumblebee buzzing around inside of your phone. But the haptics are actually fully scalable in the settings menu, so you can have them as gentle or as fierce as you like. And next up, Donald, on the subject of vampire films, says, Near Dark is a great 80s vampire flick, mate. Well worth a watch. Yes, I've definitely seen that one. That's the one with Bill Paxton and dude from Aliens, whose name I always bloody forget, Lance Henriksen. Yeah, I remember I, I must have watched that when I was about like 13 or something, late night on Channel 4. And uh, I seem to recall it, I had a kid in it who was about the same age as me at the time, who like drinks and smokes and just basically acts like a complete twat the entire movie. He was basically my friggin' hero. And next up, Slaphead says, Hey Spurt, talking about vampire movies, although not so cheesy, I reckon Blade 1 and 2 were right up there as quintessential classics. Oh, I'd say Blade 2 was right up there in the cheesiness factor. I re recall very little about that film other than uh, Wesley Snipes basically doing backflips off of motorbikes as he's driving along, staking two vampires at once, landing on his feet, and then like brushing the vampire jizz out of his hair. Not jizz, like vampire, like dust, ash, whatever they turn into when they die, basically. Um, yeah, Vampire Jizz, that would have been a very different film. 
a mod that I've also probably seen late night on Channel 4. But yeah, really loved the uh, the Blade Fell. Well, 1 and 2 were pretty good, and then 3, I think, had like a triple H in it, and it went very badly downhill at that point, I seem to recall. From Dust Till Dawn, though, also another absolute banger from the 90s. Definitely one of my all-time favourites, must have seen it like two dozen times at least, and, you know, nothing to do with the fact that I was about 15, 16 when it came out, and a substantial part of the movie had Salma Hayek dancing around in her skinnies. Uh, next up, Kath says, Talking of 80s movies, what's your opinion on using Robocop, uh, etc.? and edited bits of the films to turn them into modern insurance ads. I mean, not only is it random as f but also, like, the irony is pretty strong with that one. You know, good old Robocop, anti-corporate messaging all the way throughout. I just I do not understand the think tank that sort of came up with this sh I mean, it's kind of like getting Pinhead from Hellraiser to advertise a garden centre. Come and check out our latest range of Japanese peace lilies, or I'll eat your soul. Or like having Michael Myers advertise tampons or something. It just makes no fucking sense. Uh, next up, it's Jay-Z Shears, whose name I've probably mispronounced about 12 times on this show already. He uh, says, uh, hey, Chris, I'm back, and I see you've laid off the booze for a bit. Uh, hey, buddy, good to hear from you again. And yes, basically, only because there have been so many friggin' phones to pull out of boxes lately. I really need three hands, one to hold the camera, one to hold the phone, and another to clutch a can of special brew. Bloody octopuses, got it easy. Um, anyway, he continues, uh, it's nice to see you're doing pretty well and spaffing out more reviews. I did want to ask if there's a way for us to send you gifts or something, or maybe you will start making merch to support the channel. I've got ideas. Well, that's very sweet, mate, and although I'm intrigued and ever so slightly terrified to find out what these ideas may be, I've got absolutely no plans to do merchandise anytime soon on this channel. I'm not here to sell mugs and hats, I'm here to pretend to know things about technology. Uh, but honestly, that's very much appreciated, it's very sweet indeed. And you know what, the best way you can support this channel is just by tricking your friends and family into watching this absolute shower. You know, maybe get them drunk, steal their smartphones, subscribe them, prop them up on the sofa with, you know, this shit playing on a loop or whatever. Uh, Stuart says, the fact that Texpert seemingly hits Mrs. Brown's boys and James Corden means I'm going to keep pressing that subscribe button as hard as I can to show my appreciation. Thanks very much, buddy. Uh, but you do realise when you hit subscribe a second time, it just unsubscribes you from the channel. So you're just going to keep on doing that endlessly. Uh, what you need to do is, again, get your friends drunk, steal their smartphones, Poke that subscribe button, job done. Uh, almost uh, running out of time, so better make them last couple of them. My throat's going again as well. <coughs> Always good. Uh, the everyday driver says, damn, hearing you bring up the Sony Xperia PlayStation phone brought back 2012 for me. Good damn phone for its time. Yes, and 2012 as well, in general, I seem to recall, was a pretty bloody good year as well. Actually, let's, um, let's Google 2012 and just double check exactly what was going on uh, that year. Okay, so Whitney Houston died. Um, well, that's obviously not great. Jimmy Savile was outed as a paedophile. Storm Sandy kills... How many people? Okay, hang on. What, what actually were the good bits of 2012? There must have been some good bits, right? Actually, in retrospect, no, it, was, it wasn't great, was it? I mean, even the movie was pretty cack, although that probably came out in like 2005 or something, anyway. But yeah, were, were there actually any good years? I'm seriously starting to struggle. Like, I seem to recall that 1998 was pretty good, but I basically spent most of that off my tits on acid, bouncing around a dark room to the Prodigy while wearing a bucket hat. Uh, a couple of tech-based ones to end on quickly. Philippe says, I think the 6A will have the Tensor, but it will keep the cameras from the Pixel 5. Yeah, true, you'll probably have all camera tech and Tensor, or not the Tensor and the new camera tech, one but not both. And Bill says, any news on the Poco F4, aware it will probably be a Redmi copy, although hopefully with an updated OS. Yeah, good news, Bill. Just rewind the show about 10 minutes, mate, and bang, there you go. <clears throat> right, the throat is really, really badly going now. It's a bit of vodka to sort it out. So I, uh, I better bugger off, unfortunately, uh, especially as I'm bang out of time again. But... Thank you very much to everyone who commented on last week's show. Please do smash your comments down below and I will get through as many of those as possible next week. Speaking of next week, next week, next week, what the fuck is next week? <coughs> oh, oh, yeah, singing while my throat is fucked, not a good idea. Um, well, next week, hopefully something tech related will actually happen so I don't have to pull an entire show out of my arsehole again. I don't have any scheduled launches or anything, but I've got plenty of stuff to catch up on, so stay tuned for more fantastic me pulling things out of boxes action. In the meantime, hope you guys have a bloody lovely weekend. I'm off to go drink a massive box of beer that just turned up at my front door, which I'm frankly very much looking forward to. In fact, I'll just show it off super quick. Um, it's a, a box from Toast, which is an online beer website, and uh, they've done a collaboration with a whole bunch of breweries, which in fact 
or on the side of the box, try not to drop it and absolutely smash everything to bits. Just lift it up for the camera. Christ, I'm really glad to do all that benching now. There's 24 beers, all made with surplus bread, basically, which would have been, you know, wasted otherwise. And this box is half price currently on the main website because uh, some of them have gone slightly out of date and all, and we give a shit about that. As regular viewers will know, I will pretty much drink anything. I don't exactly have a refined palate. Yeah, 24 beers for like 45 quid. So a bit of a bargain if you're into your sort of your ales and all, all that kind of stuff. They're not, you know, sponsoring me to say this or anything. I just, you know, I like beer. And I especially like beer when it's cheap. So uh, yeah, so that'll steer me through the weekend. Hope you guys have a good one as well and have plenty of booze stacked up as well, if that's your thing. And uh, hopefully see you next week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.